Hi, I'm Wayne Krantz. In this lesson, we're going to talk about, well, actually, I'm going to talk. You're going to listen about um, songwriting. I do some of that. I'm a band leader. I have my own band, my own songs. Uh, you know, most songs start, I think, for everyone as like a germ of an idea that comes to you as an improvisation. You just have this cool little nugget of stuff. And I think everybody has this experience, and maybe everybody always has. Um, it starts with that moment of improvisation. And then the whole thing of composition is how do you expand that so that it turns from this one cool little riff you've got into something that can actually be played by a band. That's the hard part, really. If you're a musician, you're a creative person anyway. That initial idea is magic. That's magic. Where that comes from, no one can say, I don't think, anyway. Uh, but it's a beautiful moment of creation from nothing. Now, to go from that to a song, sometimes it happens all uh, by itself. You know, they, I think Paul McCartney wrote the music for, for yesterday at a sitting. You know, that can happen. Um, but most of the time, probably for Paul and everybody else, certainly, uh, it starts just as a small idea that you somehow have to figure out how to make into a bigger one. So that's where people either rely on guesswork, you know, kind of sitting around and waiting for the gods to descend and you, you keep playing that one part over and over again and hoping that something is going to come and sometimes nothing ever does come and you've just got this thing that never went anywhere. And I, I'm not a big fan of using compositional technique. That's what you know traditionally people do. That's what the classical guys did. They had that initial idea and they used the technique that they knew to build symphonies out of it. Um, I don't like the idea of that because to me it seems like it's getting too far away from my ear, which I don't like to do. Although I don't actually believe that's true, that it is that, but it just feels that way to me. I want it to kind of come more spontaneously to me and in, in a less, uh, less kind of heady way. But I do have some techniques that I use uh, to help me build songs from those initial ideas. And you know, this first thing I want to work on plays the uh, song War Torn Johnny. I can't exactly remember if the intro came first or the chorus came first. But what I do is, since all my songs, this is kind of a big deal at this point, all my songs basically uh, use pop form. They're basically verses and choruses, maybe the occasional bridge. First thing I do with that nugget that I have, I call it the germ, is I decide which of those two or three. I try to make it part of the verse or the chorus, because if all you've got is a bridge, then you have nothing. You've got to write the whole song, right? So I try to make that first idea either a verse idea or a chorus idea. So the first idea I had for the song, I immediately identified as the chorus of the thing. It goes like this. Three, four. <laughs> this chorus, right? But now I need a verse, because that's the kind of form I'm using, kind of standard pop form. I use, the, the way I um, write stuff, add stuff to things that I've found like that, I need a verse now, is to think in terms of contrast. So on this one, the, the chorus was kind of driving, kind of rocky. Uh, the melody was really the top note of the chord. That's a guitar thing right there, right? Most guitar players play guitar songs, and the top note of the chord is supposed to be the melody. But unfortunately, the world doesn't hear it like that. I know. I've experimented with that at length. They like a melody. They want something on a platter, whether it's a singer or a saxophone player or a trumpet player, 
or that fourth guitar player who's playing the solo lead or whatever the melody, they want to know what the melody is distinct from the chord. So I try to balance that with the composition. Like if I have a part of it that's kind of, the, you know, the melody's inside the chords, then I try to actually make the other part have more discernible melody in it. And I wanted it to be kind of more sustained sounding, too, because this one's kind of driving and tight. So maybe the other one has some more ringing and a little bit more melodic action. So the verse goes like this. Okay, so to avoid that effect of just having the melody be the top uh, note in the chord phenomenon, which happens a lot with guitar music, um, I break up the chord function and the melody function. You know, people sometimes say about my playing that I have this whole chord melody thing happening where the chords and the melody happen at the same time. It's not true, usually. Usually, it's in linear fashion. Nothing happens at the same time. It's an illusion because it's one thing after another, but you kind of connect it all so it sounds as if it's happening at the same time. Like, check it out. This is like, that's the, that's the harmony, right? Then the melody. As, as discernible melody. Check it out. So the chords and the melody never really happen at the same time. And on that one, on this song, War Torn Johnny, I then wrote a B section, same idea, but different, like more tension in the melody now, but still exposed. Chords on the bottom. Resolution. And then this little riff. The reason for that was I needed something to get me to the bridge. Take it to the bridge. Uh, so, but yeah, it's an illusion that the melody and the chords happen at the same time. But it's nice to balance this riff. <laughs> There's a little bit of def melodic definition in the bass part of that one, but there's really nothing up top. So this thing balances that. And when you balance it, it's more listenable for people. <laughs> 